Hi, I'm Alan Hawkins from Brigham Young University. Uh, my task is to talk to you about um, the uh, federal and state uh, healthy marriage initiatives that are going on uh, in uh, the United States these days. I've been uh, watching this progress for about 10 years. Um, many people aren't really quite aware. And of course, there's a lot of the, that you hear in the media about um, very serious, important discussions going on with regards to same-sex marriage. But um, federal and state governments are also quite interested in uh, strengthening uh, the institution of marriage and have initiated a number of programs uh, over the last 10 years. Um, and a lot of people really aren't aware of what's going on, but um, we've documented uh, more than $600 million that have been spent, uh, most in the last uh, five or six years, to, uh, in particular, to um, the money that have been given out in grants to community organizations and other kinds of organizations that are uh, focused on providing some very uh, valuable uh, relationship and couple education uh, to individuals and couples in lots of different circumstances uh, to help them learn the skills needed to form and sustain healthy relationships and healthy marriages. Um, and uh, some evaluation work that is going on also um, with these initiatives to see uh, what kinds of efforts might be uh, proving to be most successful, and also some very rigorous uh, studies that um, the uh, federal government is paying for to see what kind to see if this ki these kinds of efforts uh, can be successful in helping couples form and sustain healthy relationships, uh, form healthy marriages, and uh, even if they if we see those results, then get down to the outcomes that we value for children. Uh, in these healthy relationships. Um, there's work going on in virtually all 50 states that's being funded. Um, there are a handful of states as well that are uh, trying to coordinate efforts to um, provide these kinds of services to, um, uh, to couples and to uh, individuals. Um, when I say a handful, probably uh, three or four or five states that have very substantial kinds of initiatives going on. Um, and uh, uh, those are, are, are actually very interesting as well. Uh, most of these initiatives are, are targeting um, more disadvantaged couples. Um, couples that probably would not have a lot of access to these kinds of services otherwise. Um, and so, uh, in that sense, then they're reaching out to a much more needy population and in finding um, that these programs are very well received and valued uh, in uh, those populations. But uh, they're reaching out to uh, lower income unmarried parents who've had children together, providing them with some uh, educational services that uh, they might not otherwise get. Uh, reaching out to youth in more uh, disadvantaged populations and trying to get them earlier in the process as they think about healthy relationship formation. Uh, step families are uh, a real need there and remarriages which now are about half of uh, all marriages in the United States involve one or both couple, uh, individuals, partners who've been uh, uh, in a marriage before. Uh, and so there are a lot of diverse needs out there and a lot of curricula that's been developed and is now being tested um, for those needs. And uh, meeting, um, uh, I think, a real need within the field uh, to, to, to push this kind of service out to um, populations who have not had as much access to it. Um, I've been very interested in uh, evaluating this work and that, that work is coming along. Work, the evaluation work seems to always be slower, but uh, it's coming, it's there, and some early um, work that has since, uh, I think, that is beginning to show the, a, a possibility and a potential um, uh, for this kind of work and, and meeting a very needy population. So um, it's a fascinating work. Um, I think sometimes we, we see work, particularly family life educators, see their work as just a program. But um, what we're beginning to see now is that uh, family life education is a policy tool 
that is being used by policymakers, by legislators, uh, to provide a service that can help couples achieve a very important public policy purpose, which is to help strengthen these relationships um, for the benefit of the children that are involved and for the well-being of the adults that are involved as well.